Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-1440. Item Number, SCP-1440 Object Class, Keter Special Containment Procedures, SCP-1440 is currently uncontained and its location is unknown since its last containment breach. Due to the nature of SCP-1440, the Foundation may not have the means to contain it without risking an unacceptable loss of resources and personnel. Until suitable containment procedures can be found, focus should be given to the location and surveillance of SCP-1440 and to minimizing civilian exposure to it through the identification of its travel pattern. Description: SCP-1440 is a man of unknown ethnicity and age. When questioned about its name, place or time of birth, SCP-1440 will refuse to answer, although it is unclear if this is due to the subject being unwilling to share this information or not possessing it. Though the subject's appearance is that of an octogenarian, he has not shown any signs of aging in the 50 years since first coming to the attention of the Foundation. SCP-1440's anomalous nature becomes apparent once it comes into contact with human population or man-made objects and remains in contact with them for longer than a few days. SCP-1440 has an acute adverse effect on everything connected to humanity. Prolonged exposure of any man-made object or person to it will cause increasingly destructive events to occur in SCP-1440's vicinity, until the destruction or death of said human element. The only exceptions to this are SCP-1440 itself and its belongings, its clothes, a sack made of unidentified material, a pack of worn playing cards, and a small glass cup. SCP-1440 appears to be aware of its effect on human populations, and will attempt to avoid coming into contact with them whenever possible. Despite these intentions, SCP-1440 is compelled to travel in what seems to be a highly complex pattern, which invariably leads it into contact with human population. The exact nature of this pattern has not yet been successfully analyzed, and SCP-1440 has not been able to provide any information concerning it. The subject is not actively hostile and will not resist attempts to contain it, though all such attempts have failed and led to a considerable loss of personnel and resources due to the aforementioned anomalous properties. SCP-1440 was first brought to the Foundation's attention when it approached Dr. H, a researcher at Site H, on her commute to work. SCP-1440 showed unexplained knowledge of Dr. H's work for the Foundation and requested her assistance. When Dr. A inquired about the nature of the assistance the subject required, it responded that it hoped the Foundation would be able to destroy him. SCP-1440 was brought to Site A for questioning, which led to the destruction of the site, the deaths of A personnel and the destruction of six safe and Euclid-level SCP objects. All other attempts at containing SCP-1440 have resulted in similar occurrences. Addendum SCP-1440-A The following is an interview conducted with SCP-1440 during the fourth attempt to contain it, on Area 142. The log was being stored on a remote server, hence its survival. Interview Log 1440-7 Interviewer, Dr. A. Interviewed, SCP-1440 Forward Following the arrival of SCP-1440 to Area 142, personnel began complaining about severe headaches and nausea. In the next two days, three of the four on-site water purification filters broke down, Area 142's hangar collapsed, causing the deaths of multiple airmen and Dr. A. Previously in perfect physical condition, suffered a complete collapse of both kidneys and both lungs simultaneously. Begin Log Good afternoon, SCP-1440. And to you, Doctor. Do you know why we brought you here? Of course I do, and applaud you for still attempting to contain me, but since your last three attempts I came to realize you cannot help me. It would be best if you let me go, for your own good. The first brother is already standing behind you, Doctor, you would best hurry. 
You mentioned these brothers before, three if I recall correctly. Three, I. Different, but one and the same. All cruel, all vengeful, all capable of holding a grudge for a long time. They are the cause of my misfortune, and therefore the cause of yours. Subject appears to notice something behind Dr. A. Though video and audio feed reveal nothing unusual, the second brother joins the first, time is running short. Release me, or I cannot vouch for your safety. It might already be too late. I'm afraid I can't do that. Besides, you mentioned three brothers, if the third isn't here yet, we must have some time left. Shakes head, the third never appears. In that, he is crueler than both his brothers, for he knows his appearance is the only thing that will set me free. I have spent time untold searching for him, trying to return his prize and those I won from his brothers, but to no avail. Subject looks behind Dr. A. Again, sighs, the second has his hands on your shoulders, it is too late now. Doom is never far behind the second. Before you perish, my poor child, allow me to give you a word of advice. Go ahead. Should you choose to challenge death to a game of cards for your life, there is one thing you must never do. And what is that? Win. End log. Closing statement. At that moment, the on-site nuclear device stored in Area 142 detonated. Despite multiple failsafes, Area 142 was destroyed and all on-site personnel were killed. SCP-1440 was spotted more than 3,000, 3,000 kilometers away from Area 142's location a week following its destruction, suffering no apparent harm. After three additional containment breaches, attempts to contain SCP-1440 have been suspended indefinitely. Addendum SCP-1440-B Due to the growing size of human population and its rapid expansion into previously empty areas, SCP-1440 attested during its fifth containment that it is becoming increasingly difficult for it to avoid contact with humanity while still adhering to its compulsion. Analysis of the subject's traveling pattern is continuing, as are efforts to find a permanent containment procedure. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.